Okay then my friends, so now I want to move on to another layout widget which you're going to find yourself using a fair amount and that is the column widget. And the column basically lets us create a column of other child widgets. So where is the container widget which we've already seen has a child field which can just be a single child widget. The column widget has a children field, plural, which can be a list of widgets. And then those widgets get displayed as a column on the screen one after another. And not only can we display the widgets in a column, we can also dictate how those children widgets are displayed in the column using a couple of extra arguments that we can pass into the column widget itself. Now, if you've ever used CSS Flexbox before and you're familiar with terms like cross axis and main axis, then you're going to feel right at home with column layouts because we use the similar kind of terminology with these. If not, don't worry, I'm going to explain everything as we go along. First of all, let's make a column and add some children to it. Now to begin with, just to practice, I'm going to make a new sandbox widget and put all of our kind of practice code in there. And we can use this sandbox widget then whenever we want to explore a new feature without butchering our actual home screen widget that we created before. So then, inside this sandbox widget, um, or rather inside this sandbox build function, I'm going to return a scaffold widget just like we did in the home widget. And the reason I'm doing this is so we can have the app bar at the top of the page with a title inside it. And so that everything inside the scaffold like text gets styled the right way using material design. So let me just finish off this scaffold widget then and then we can start work on the column itself. All right then, so you can see I've now added this scaffold. We have the app bar right here with the title sandbox, also giving this a background color of gray and text in the body that says hello. Now up here, we actually need to switch this because currently inside material app, we're saying the home route should be the home widget, which is coming from over here. But we want to use the sandbox widget just while we learn how to use this column widget. So I'm going to change that to sandbox, save it. You will need to do a refresh over here because we're not with inside a build method, but once you refresh, you should see the sandbox page over here. Awesome. Okay then. So now what I'd like to do is get rid of this text inside the body because now we're going to do a column widget. So like I said, a column widget can have several children. And for that reason, we have a children property or a children arguments. Now this is going to be a list of widgets. And if we click on children and hover over it, we're going to see that that list must be widgets inside it. So we can't just put random items inside this list like strings or anything like this. They all must be widgets. All right, so we can see this blue squiggly line. So I'm going to apply a const right here. So we get rid of that for now. And then inside these square brackets, we can now just comma separate different widgets. So what I'm going to do is just a bunch of containers, which we've already seen. So container like so. And then inside this, we'll apply a width property with the first one to be 100. And now we're getting this red squiggly line, meaning this can't be a constant anymore. So again, you're going to see lots of this as we go forward, adding const, removing it, etc. But then after that, we're going to apply a color argument as well. This time it's going to be colors.red. And then we'll do a child widget, which will be a text widget. And the text will just say one. Now. What I'm going to do is copy this several times. So let me just grab that, copy it, then do a comma, paste it in, comma, paste it in. So what I'm going to do now is change the color of each one. So this one can be green and this one down here can be blue just so we can see them differently on the screen. I'll also change the width of each one. So this is 200 pixels and then this is going to be 300 pixels. Change the text. So this is two. And this is three. All right, so what we have now is a column widget with a children property. Now the children is a list of different widgets. We have three widgets inside it, comma separated, and they're just three containers with different widths, different colors, and different children or different text in the children. So if I save this now, hopefully we should see those three containers, the red one, the green one, and the blue one. And they all have those different widths, awesome. And you can see they're all in a column, one after another going down. Now, if you look at this, you can see the default behavior of these different widgets inside the column is to stack one on top of the other in the center. So 
they're kind of centrally aligned, right? They're not all shifted to the left. Now, I said that we can change the layout of these different column items with a couple of different properties we can use. And those properties are the cross axis alignment and the main axis alignment. Now, just to explain the difference of those, I've got a little diagram prepped over here. So the main axis is the direction of the content. Now in a column, the direction of the content is going from top to bottom. So downwards, this is the main axis, right? So we have the content going down a column like that. So we would control the layout of the items in that direction using the main axis alignment property. Now, if you wanna control the layout of the items in the opposite direction going across, so for example, if you wanted all of these shifted to the left or all of them shifted to the right, then we would use the cross axis alignment because the cross axis is the axis perpendicular to the main axis, right? So in a column, the main axis is up and down and the cross axis is left and right. So let's try using these two different properties inside the column widget to try and control this. So what I'm gonna do is use the cross axis alignment first of all, and that is left to right, don't forget the cross axis. And to give this a value, if we hover over that, you can see it requires this thing right here, cross axis alignment. Now the default value is cross axis alignment dot center, which is why we can see they're all kind of centrally aligned, but we can change that. We'll say cross axis alignment and then press dots and we get the different values available to us. So for example, if I say start, then we're gonna see them go to the start on the left. If I say end and save it, then we'll see them go to the end. And by the way, they don't go right to the end because the column's width is dictated by the largest width item inside the column. Now that is this blue one, all right? So the total column width at most is this thing right here. And so when we say cross axis alignment end, it goes to the end of the current column width. Now, if we say dot and then go to stretch and press save, then it's gonna stretch to the whole width available to the column. So that's the one case where kind of the default width of the column is overridden, if you like, to stretch to take up the entirety of the space available to it. All right, so when we use stretch, they go all the way across. And I think we'll keep it at that. Next, we'll try the main axis alignment, like so. And for this, we can say main axis alignment. And if we hover over this one, you can see that the default value is start, but I can say dots, and then we'll say center, for example. Press save. And now we can see they go to the center of the screen in the available room to them. If I change this and say dots end, press save, they go right to the bottom. I can spread them out by using these other properties like space around and space between. So space between, put space between each one like this. Space around, there's something slightly different. It puts space around each one. So the top and bottom ones have space around them on both sides, not just between them. Now we're gonna keep this as center, I think for now, like so, all right? So that's how columns work, basically. We have a column widget. Inside that, we have a children field, which is a list of widgets that we can display in that column, and they're gonna stack one on top of the other. And then we can use these two properties to change the display or the layout of those different column widgets. So we are gonna be using columns quite a lot as we go forward. Um, I think for now, that's enough practice. So what we'll do now is try using a column inside our home widget. All right then, so what I'll do is get rid of this text for the body, and instead we're gonna have a column widget, like so. All right, so we know inside a column, we have a children field, which is a list of widgets. Inside here, I'm gonna do a couple of different containers. So the first container, like so, is gonna have a color, and that color is gonna be colors.brown, and then the strength is gonna be 200, so quite a light brown. We're gonna give this some padding. We know we can give containers padding by using const and then edge insets, and I'm gonna do it all the way around, so I'll say dot all, and it's gonna be 20, like so. We're also gonna have a child property, and that child will be a text widget, so we can apply const to that as well. Text, 
And then inside here, we'll just say how I like my coffee, like so, dot, dot, dot. So that's the first container. I'm just going to copy that, add a comma right here, and then paste it back in. We'll change this brown color to 100. So there's, you know, a little bit of contrast between them. This right here is going to be the same for the padding. And then here, I will just put coffee prefs. So later on, we're going to output the coffee preferences right here instead of this text. But for now, that will do. Okay, so we have this column now. And I also want to change the alignment of the items inside that column. But before we do that, let's get this on the screen. So let's go back to the main dot dart. And I'm going to change this from sandbox back to home. I'm going to save that. And then I'm going to do a full refresh over here so we can see the home screen. All right. So we can see those two containers now in the column. I want them to go all the way across the screen. I want them to stretch. So now I can come to the column itself and I will use the cross axis alignment field to do that. Because remember, the main axis is up and down. The cross axis is perpendicular to that going across. So cross axis alignments. And the value of this is cross axis alignments dot stretch. And then if I save that, that looks a lot better. Awesome. Now, there's one more thing I want to do in this lesson, nothing to do with columns, just to make this look a little bit nicer. And that is just to make this text at the top white and bold. So that's this text inside the app bar. So remember, to do that, we can apply a style field to the text itself, the text widget, which is a text style. Inside that, we can give the different fields. So the color is going to be colors.white. And then after that, we'll do a font weight, which is going to be bold. So font weight dot bold, like so. I'm going to save that. Hopefully, we'll see that update, which we do. Awesome. So, my friends, that is columns. In the next lesson, we're going to look at the opposite to columns, which is rows.